Uh, good evening, members, uh, members of the public, officers. Can I welcome you to this uh, planning meeting of the 19th of January? Um, if it's not too late, I know we're three weeks into the new year, but I know we've seen each other on different play, you know, different meetings. But happy new year to you all. Um, a safe one, and hopefully we move on getting rid of this virus and so forth. Um, I'd like to welcome Councillor Everett onto the planning and also welcome back to Councillor Wing. Um, I'm sure Councillor Everett has been on planning before. Many times. I, I thought so, <laughs> I thought so. Uh, regarding masks, um, I'm sure you know we, we are due to wear them still. Uh, yep, um, the lifting of the masks doesn't happen until next week. Um, so please, um, if you wouldn't mind doing that, I know it's difficult for me because, as you know, I talk a lot. Uh, we are being live streamed, so um, housekeeping and so forth. Uh, which brings me on to that. Um, if the fire alarm is activated, please vacate the offices via the stairs, either through the security door, which is behind me on this time, or the doors opposite the lifts in the foyer. Please, of course, do not use the lifts. And assemble on Holy Square Green, opposite the council offices. Uh, and when it's safe to do so, uh, the officers will come and get you and bring you back in. Does anybody uh, this evening uh, wish to film this meeting? I can't see any, thank you very much. Oh, so I would ask members and members of the public, please do not use your phones, turn them to silent, uh, do not make calls or take calls whilst in the chamber. Thank you. Uh, members requesting to speak under Council Procedure Rule 20.1, Item 5C, Councillor Scobie. Good evening, Councillor Scobie. Public speaking, the following application has been reserved for public speaking. Would members please strike through and make a note of the item, which again is 5C, uh, 274 North Down Road, Margate. Agenda item one, I have apologies at the moment from Councillor Rozeski. Is there any other member not with us tonight? No, okay, thank you. Uh, agenda item two, uh, declarations of interest, which I believe there is from Councillor Wing. Yes, Chair, uh, item 5C, uh, the company involved is actually my accountants and I have signed their petition. Thank you for that, Councillor Wing, and I will ask you to leave the chamber when we come to that item. Agenda item three, a minutes of the planning committee meeting which was held on the 15th of December. Do members agree that the minutes of that meeting are correct and approved and signed by myself? Could I have a proposal, please? Yes. Councillor Alban, a seconder. Yes. Councillor Paul Moore. Do you all agree? Yes. Thank you, members. A uh, point of information uh, regarding item 5A, I'm going to hand over to Mr Livingston, our Planning Applications Manager. Ian. Thank you, Chair. Um, as mentioned, point of information uh, for members about agenda item 5A, which is the land adjacent to 475 Margate Road, Broadstairs. So a uh, couple of updates to two conditions. Condition two, uh, two of the plans reference need to be updated to reflect the amended landscaping plan. Uh, and therefore the site plan, which is referenced uh, 208900 revision P01 is updated to P02, which was received on the 11th of January, 2022. And the hard surfacing plan, uh, which is referenced uh, 208150 revision P01 is updated to P02, received on the same day, the 11th of January. Um, and those are the plans that were submitted and also the ones that are on the council's website. And therefore the condition is corrected that's before members. 
Uh, on condition three, uh, which required details of the means of foul and surface water drainage to be submitted prior to the commencement of development, Southern Water have provided an additional comment on the application prior to the meeting this evening, confirming that the proposed drainage layout provided with the application originally is acceptable, and therefore condition three is updated to require that the development shall be constructed in accordance with the submitted drainage strategy plan numbered uh, 6112s. 23C001P3 received on the 23rd of September 2021. Uh, the recommendation to members is therefore updated uh, to reflect the changes to conditions two and three. And on an additional point, uh, the report for that item, uh, number 5A, uh, incorrectly identifies the location of the site uh, in the St. Moses Montefiore ward uh, when it falls within St. Peter's uh, due to an administrative error. So apologies for that. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Ian. Uh, moving on to agenda item four, I would ask the planning officer to outline the report, and that is Emma. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> thank you, Chairman. This is an application for a, a non-material amendment. Um, the site is located here in Margate High Street on the corner of um, the High Street with New Street. Um, the application has come before members. The Senate District Council is the applicant. So the consideration is whether this is a, a non-material change to the original proposal. So this is uh, the site here, this building here, um, and this is a closer view of the building. So the application that was previously considered was for the replacement of the existing windows within the front and side elevation of the buildings. Um, and so you can see these are the existing, win uh, the existing windows within the building on the front elevation onto the high street. And these are um, also within the front elevation. And then you can see the side elevation windows here as well. And then again, the side elevation onto New Street, the existing windows. So this was the approved front elevation. So it was to replace the existing windows from um, timber to um, aluminium. And it can show, you can see the window design with three window panes and the glazing bars through the center, um, a larger window at ground floor level um, and smaller windows above. And the proposal is to alter the um, proportions of these panes within these windows. So this is the approved plan and this is now the proposed plan. So the difference is the proportions of um, the panes within the lower, middle and, and top section of the window. So the actual opening, the overall opening of the window remains the same in terms of the width and the height and the window design remains the same. So it's just literally the, the proportions of these that are changing. So on the first floor level, the uh, top frame is becoming um, eight centimetres deeper, the middle 17.4 centimetres smaller and the bottom frame 3.9 centimetres deeper. And then on the second floor windows, um, it's a difference of 2.4 centimetres to the top pane, 7 centimetres to the middle and 3.5 centimetres to the lower frame. Um, so it's considered that overall, given the overall um, uh, uh, size of the building and the alterations to the windows and the fact that the, the actual size of the opening remains the same, the window design remains the same, and the only difference is, is just the proportion of the frames, that the proposal is a non-material change to the original consent and therefore it's recommended for approval. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Emma. I recommend the officer's uh, uh, recommendation is adopted. Could the vice chair please second? I second that, chair. Thank you very much, members. Councillor Robin. Yeah, thank you, chair. Um, I can't see anything wrong with this what's, whatsoever. The, the alterations are minimal. Um, it doesn't really affect the conservation area any more than the than the original application. So I, I, I'm mindful to approve. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Alban. Councillor Bayford. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with Councillor Alban. And to be honest, the sooner this um, progresses and is used for the purpose it's intended, the better. So I shall certainly be supporting this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members wish... Councillor Wing. Uh, I certainly support it as well as, an, as a previous owner of a Grade 2 listed building and presently with the house in a conservation zone. It's good to see that we've, we've got some forward thinking and we're trying to use modern materials within a conservation zone to increase our, our, our climate emergency uh, agenda. Thank you, Councillor Wing. Any other members wish to comment? Okay, members, thank you. I'm going to put this to the vote. Uh, those in favour, please show. 
Any against? Abstentions? No, that is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, members. Um, agenda item five, schedule of planning applications and public speaking. Any site visits uh, that take place or arrange from tonight will take place on Friday the 4th of February 2022. Agenda item 5C is the application which is for refusal R03274 North Down Road Margate. Now I do have, as I mentioned, a member of the public is going to speak. Yes, sir. sorry, I, um, Councillor Wing has left. I was about to come into that. Um, member of the public, I believe, speaking. Oh, right, no, I did a, a pub. Okay, <laughs> no, it's got down here. But I read it out. The public doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Under twenty point one, Councillor Scopey. Thank you, Chairman. Um, as one of the local councillors, I'm always pleased to see improvements in properties in our ward. Um, John Michael of. MPH Accountants has owned the premises since 1977. I remember the shop well, it was Chapman's Bakery and then later Kent Scuba. The shop was rather tatty and unappealing, like the properties either side, some opposite, and not really significant, of significant historic interest, and is not listed, referred to, or stated as being so in the Management Plan Appendix 2. <coughs> When Kent Scuba decided to move out of the shop, Mr. Michael took the opportunity to move his business from upstairs and gain the advantage of a shop front for his business. He used a firm to produce a better design and enhance the building for disabled access and improve the quality of the front in terms of materials, maintenance and thermal properties, all very important in terms of uh, improving the carbon footprint of the building and making it better for workers and everybody. Uh, in terms of disabled access. Mr. Michael had not been informed by TDC, the local planning authority, that his premises were in a conservation area. The firm who undertook the design and construction was similarly unaware of it being in a conservation area. This is a significant fact. Mr. Michael has always been willing to work with uh, TDC planning department. When he was informed that the premises would not be granted planning permission by an enforcement officer, he was surprised, as the officer seemed to have prejudiced the application with a simple eye test. He attempted to get pre-planning uh, approval and paid an appropriate fee, but this was never completed, and eventually the fee was refunded. He then put the retrospective application you now have before you. Uh, Mr. Michael has over 100 letters of support from local residents and businesses to support his application. I would ask you this evening to use your common sense and approve the application for retrospective planning permission and support this important local business. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Scobie. Um, I'll ask the planning officer, which is Annabelle, please, to outline the report. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So this is the application site outlined in red. Uh, so re as has been said, it's a retrospective application for a replacement shop front. So this is an aerial photograph of the site. We have Crawford Gardens to the side here, North Down Road running along the top here. And this is the application site. The application site is within the North Down Road conservation area. And whilst it is not a listed building in its own right, it's described in the North Down Road Conservation Area appraisal as a positive unlisted building. So there is weight given to it in that document as being of some historic significance. So this is the actual photograph of the previous shop front. And whilst at some point there has been this overly large uh, fascia sign placed on the shop front it can be seen that the shop front was traditional in appearance it had stall risers um, transom windows to the top here it actually slopes away from the pavement and isn't flush in the way modern shop fronts tend to be and it has the large shop window 
the door and a small glass display cabinet. So it has many things that you might expect to see in a traditional shop front. And this is enough of view of it and you can see it in the context of the shop fronts surrounding it. And again, you can see without the, the large fascia sign that it is very much a traditional shop front and it's traditional materials and traditional design. And again, just another large, longer view of the shop front surrounding it. So this is the site with the previous shop front. Um, this pearl is also a traditional shop front, which was granted for consent in 2015. And this site is reflections is also a traditional shop front, which you can see has recessed doorways and has character and store risers to the bottom. So looking at some photographs now as the shop front that's been installed, it's this shop front here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So as can be seen, it's, it is modern in appearance and it now sits flush to the pavement. So that recessed, a sort of slanted shop front has gone. And it could be argued that they have attempted to put transom windows to the top here, but the proportions are not in keeping with what would be expected in a traditional shop front. And we are looking at aluminium and materials, etc. One positive that has come about in terms of design is the removal of that overly large face design. Um, again, this is a view of the uh, looking up North Down Road. This is the shop front in question. This is reflections that we saw previously, and this is quite traditional in character, as you can see with the recessed um, doors, the large windows, the transom windows to the top. And this is looking and comparing the shop front that we're considering tonight is here on the right. And this is a pearl. And as I said before, this was actually granted consent. It was a modern, more modern uh, shop front, again, aluminium, but it was granted consent to go back to a timber and a more traditional appearance in 2015. And that was considered to be a welcome benefit to the character and appearance of the shop front. Um, these are some shop fronts, just to give members some more context, on the opposite side of North Down Road, opposite the site. But so it is appreciated, there is a mix of shop fronts and different designs and characters um, within the conservation area. So this is the elevation of, it says existing, but as we know it is a retrospective application, so this was a previous shop front. Um, you can see here, again, the overlarge fascia sign, but generally the transom windows, the historic stall riser and the small glass cabinet, display cabinet um, to the right of the door. This is the ground floor of that previous shop front, what part ground floor of the building. So you can see it was a large shop front that projected. It's um, turned away at an angle from the pavement, the doorway can be seen there and that small traditional feature of the display um, window on the opposite side of the door can be seen. Um, this is the shop front that's in place now. It is considered by offices to lack the finesse of um, the traditional shop front. It is now flush to the pavement and it is aluminium um, in nature, uh, in materials. So it is a non-traditional material, but not necessarily unacceptable in a conservation area, but in terms of what was there before and the design that's come forward with this shop front, it is considered to all add and have an adverse impact on the character and appearance of the conservation area. And again, just looking at the ground floor, you can see it is now lost um, glass, um, small glass uh, display window that was situated by the door and it is now flush to the pavement. So to summarise members, it, the site does lie with the north, within the North Down Road conservation area. 
It isn't listed, but it is um, acknowledged to be a, a building, certainly of historic interest, and it was a positive um, listed building in the conservation area appraisal. Uh, members will know that it is the duty of the council as the local planning authority to preserve or enhance the area's special character and appearance. The alterations to the shop front have resulted in the loss of, the sh of a shop front that was constructed from traditional materials and had a very traditional design. The new shop front has resulted in some public benefits and that has to be acknowledged and weighed against any harm that's considered to be um, caused by the ins installation of shop front. So those benefits include improved security, um, increased thermal efficient efficiency and accessibility. However, it's not been adequately demonstrated that these benefits could not have been achieved um, through the adaptation of the previous shop front or the use of more sympathetic materials and design. So um, these benefits are considered to be outweighed by the harm that is um, caused to the character and appearance of the conservation area by the installation of this shop front. So it is concluded by officers that the replacement shop front, by virtue of its modern design and materials, does fail to preserve the architectural and historic me merit of the actual building itself, as well as detracting from the special character of the significance of the conservation area, which are both uh, was the designated heritage assets. So the recommendation is for refusal. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Annabelle. I move the officer's recommendation is adopted. Could the vice chair please second? I'll second that, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Colman Cook. Members, few hands going up here. Um, I'll take ladies first. Councillor Bayford. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I have to say that there is quite a variety of, of different shop fronts. I don't find it particularly unattractive, and there are a lot of benefits. So. Uh, I accept that it isn't traditional in the way that, that the previous shop front was, but I personally can't see a lot of harm, and I, I think I, I would like to approve this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Auburn. Yes, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, as Councillor Bayford's mentioned, uh, you know, I lived just off, I lived off of North Down Road for quite a number of years, and uh, used North Down Road on a regular basis. And uh, there's always been an eclectic mix of shop fronts and, and different businesses, etc., etc. Et um, <coughs> I, I, I don't mean to laugh, but to actually use the word finesse for North Down Road is slightly uh, is slightly a bit over the top. Um, <coughs> could I ask if we could have the the current photograph of how it is at the moment. Yeah, that'll do. Can you go back to that one? Yeah. Now, listening to what the officer said about uh, the next door shop front, about it being done and having a nice, uh, and how it was done and the application was, a, was, a, was approved. Since then, they've put these w large wooden planters outside, which takes the view and and the uh, sight of that shop front. It, you know, if you stand in front of it, it completely destroys it. Um, so, looking at looking at the frontage goes along, uh, the applicant could also do the same there. If it was the same height, it would be permitted development. So even if you had a nice shop front in there as, as what you would, or you wanted to retain it, that too would detract from that shop front. Um, I go along with, with Councillor Bayford and um, I'm mindful to support the application, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hart. Thank you, Chair. Well, I'm at odds with everybody here because um, I think it looked appalling and I think it should be as it was. Um, I think it's a shame to lose some of these historic pieces of shop front and just to grab a couple of extra square feet of footage to put your desk in, I think it's quite a shame. Um, I do agree with uh, Councillor Auburn, I think those planters shouldn't be there at all, but, um, and that does detract from the view down the street. But I do think it's a shame that people don't have the ability to look on the local 
um, council offices um, what is a conservation area. It's not hard to work it out. A builder can do it very easily. I can do it. Anyone here can do it. And for him to turn around and say he didn't know is just just appalling, absolutely appalling. It's not an excuse. It's just laziness or trying to turn around and say, I'll do it retrospectively. And I think that's very lazy and absolutely dishonest, to be fair. And I think it should be back, be put back to it as it was. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hart. Uh, Councillor Keane. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm also a ward councillor in this area, so I know North Down Road well, and there is a huge mix of different buildings. Generally, because of the conservation area, I'm in favour of keeping the original features. But a couple of things occur to me with this one. It wasn't well kept in the past, so you know, it, it actually does look better than it used to, although more modern. It does increase <coughs> accessibility, which I think is something very important today. But also, how come the sign for the scuba sign was never flagged up in a conservation area as being inappropriate? Because as I say, I think that's an improvement on that and I will be supporting um, it going through against the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Everett. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I mean, what concerns me is that we're, if we're asking the applicant to return the, the site to its previous state, then he would be fully entitled to return the previous fascia board, which I think is a, is a bigger, um, a bigger in, inappropriate feature in the area than the shop front is installed. So I share what Councillor Keane's views about concerns about how that arrived in the first place. Perhaps it was there before the conservation area was brought in. Um, but we clearly don't want to go back to that. I mean, it does seem to me that it's a shame that um, the applicant didn't engage with the council at an earlier stage, because I'm sure that there was a better compromise that could have been reached. Um, but here we are, and it seems to me disproportionate to force them to go back to what was there. Uh, thank you. Councillor Paul Moore. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, sadly, I'm in the opinion as Councillor Hart. Um, a retrospective application means they've done something without permission, and now they're applying for it because they've been caught out. Um, the fact that the property was in disrepair, well, that's the owner's fault, not our fault. So we're not to blame for it being redone. I think the original was far better. Um, you could argue, as uh, Councillor Everett says, about the oversized scuba board, but then that was done before. And, and we're not talking about before, we're talking about now. Um, I, I don't think it's an attractive uh, proposal. Uh, I think, as you say, if they'd been engaging with the council, we could have had a better compromise, better materials. You could have used other materials to for your thermal uh, savings and things like that. So I'll be voting against this one. Thank you. Uh, do I see any other members wish to speak? I don't. Okay. Uh, members, it's time for you to vote. Um, and it, the recommendation, as you're aware, is for refusal. So those who are in favour of the officer's recommendation, would they please show the hands for refusal? Thank you. Uh, those against the officer's recommendation? Thank you. Any abstentions? Right, the officer's recommendation has fallen, so just bear with me as always for a moment. I'm going to hand over to <coughs> Mr. Livingston. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So in terms of um, approving the application, as members are aware, um, reasons need to be given for approving an application uh, against the recommendation of, of officers. And just to summarise um, what members have stated, um, I think if, if a member wants to move a motion that consider the, the benefits of the new shop front, um, specifically what's been mentioned, sort of getting, getting across all the members' comments is thermal efficiency, accessibility and a reduced size of the fascia would uh, outweigh any identified harm to the North Down Road conservation area. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ian. Uh, members, do, does anybody I know? I'll how, that, Chair. How, un how unusual is that? <laughs> 
Councillor Alban, your proposal, please. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. We take it. You can take it. Okay. Yeah. That's you're fine. Uh, could I have a seconder, please, Councillor Bayford? Right. You've heard uh, the proposal of Councillor Alban. Those who agree, please show to approve. To approve. Okay, against. Oh, that. Thank you, members. That has been carried. Thank you for that one. If you bear with us, we will go and try and find Councillor Keane. Wing. Wing. I, I've said that. Be I said. It. Sorry. Sorry, Councillor Keane. I've said that before. I believe when. Uh, I, I, I know, I know, I'm a year older since I saw you last. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Wing. No doubt it was cold out there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Right, that concludes the public speaking for this meeting. I'm going to call on James, who's got a different face on tonight, um, <laughs> to read out the remainder of the planning applications. If a member wishes to reserve an application to speak, will they please call out as she reads? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, 5A is... Yes, thank you. Land adjacent to 475 Margate Road, Broadstairs. And 5B, numbers 4 to 15 and 19 to 23, Royal Crescent, St. Augustine's Road, Ramsgate. Nope, okay. Thank you, Katie. Um, right, um, can I have a proposal for those that aren't going to be spoken about tonight, please? Don't you agree? I am, I always do. Yeah, there must be something about you, Steve. Um, seconder, please. Seven, uh, Count, Councillor Wing, I called you Councillor King again just now. I do apologise. <laughs> Members in favour? Okay. Thank you. Moving over to Officer on the Margate Road application, please. Thank you, Chairman. The application site is outlined in red here, so it's within the um, Tesco um, site up at Westwood Cross. So you can see the site is here. This is the existing petrol station. This is um, the Tesco's um, unit. Um, this is Broadstairs Retail Park area here. Um, you can see uh, Margate Road running along this area here. So this is a aerial view of the site. So the, the site is this um, area here that's currently soft landscaped. And then a, a closer view of this. So you can see there's a footpath, an existing footpath that runs along from Margate Road into um, Borsos Retail Park. You can see the existing internal access um, roundabout and um, access would be from this internal road. And then a, a closer view again. So um, there are some trees on the site. So you can see in this aerial view, there's a, a group of trees in this location here and in this location here. So in the next few photos, I will show you the view is taken from this footpath looking towards the site. So this is the view from that footpath, footpath looking towards the site. Um, so the site extends right to this part here where you can see the uh, retaining wall running around the edge of the site. You can see the existing roundabout on the right hand side. And then this is showing that corner. So this is now the footpath leading into Borsos Retail Park and the existing tree in this location here. So this tree is to be retained. And then this is again looking from the footpath across to Margate Road in the distance, and you can see and the existing trees along this boundary here. So you can see it's currently just um, just grassed on this site. So one of the issues is the, the loss of this open space, and whether that's a concern, um, and and then generally the development of the site and and the impact on the area. So again, looking from these photos are now taken from Margate Road. So from this point here this is a different different day you can see it's a little bit foggier um, so this is again the footpath that runs through the site this is on the right hand side of the footpath so in this area here it's proposed to um, retain 
um, this tree here, this tree on the right hand side is, is being removed and it's also proposed um, some new tree planting along this area which you'll see later on the landscaping plan and also the um, installation of some benches along this area here which will help um, in terms of amenity for people wishing to sit and eat lunch. Um, and this is view is taken from Margate Road again looking towards the site you can see the existing um, trees along this boundary here. So some of these trees are, are being removed and some are being retained. So I'll just show you a closer view. So this tree on the left is being removed. These two trees here are being retained and this group um, on the right are being removed. So again, that's a, that's a view of the ones being removed. So these are all birch trees. But you can see they're quite small, um, small trees, not overly mature. Um, none of these trees are considered worthy of protection through a TPO. So this is the site layout. You can see on the plan the existing trees and the footpath that currently runs through the site. Um, the, there's also an existing soakaway in this area here. So this area can't be developed. So you'll see later on again through the landscaping plan that we're looking to um, enhance this area through um, a wildflower um, growing area, which will, will help with biodiversity. So you'll see that later on the plan. So this is the proposed layout plan. The applications for a um, single commercial unit, restaurant, um, coffee shop use with a drive through. So the access comes off from the internal roundabout. Um, this road here would be the, the drive through link that runs around the unit. Um, you can see the unit is, is the area in purple here with um, um, a storage area and yard area to, to the north of the slide. And this area here is external seating area associated with the unit. You can see to the, to the bottom of the slide, this would be um, parking provisions. There's 22 car parking spaces being provided, um, including some disabled spaces and five cycle, um, cycle uh, hoops for um, storing of bicycles for, for staff and, and um, patrons of the site. Um, there's a pedestrian link that would run off the existing link that would connect to the site. And there's also a pedestrian link from Margate Road that would go across the drive through to the site as well. This area here is the proposed bin store, which would be um, enclosed by some hedging. Um, and you can see the areas in green, which is, is showing the, the soft landscaping around the edge of the site and between the, the drive through road and, and the development. And then this area here is the area that's proposed for the wildflower meadow. So this is over the existing um, soakaway areas. Um, in terms of the trees, you can see a few of the tree planted, but again, it's, it's clearer on the landscaping plan um, later on. So the site's located within um, Westwood Town Centre. It's in a primary shopping area and it's in an area allocated as secondary frontage. So the proposal is a sui generis use on the basis that there's a drive through associated with the restaurant use. Um, but as a commercial use within the town centre, there's, there's no principal objection to the development of this site for a commercial unit. Um, the only consideration is whether the, the need for the residential, oh, not residential, sorry, the need for the commercial unit um, and the, the job creation that would result from that, um, whether that outweighs any harm to the, the area from the, the development of the site. So in terms of the use, it's, it's proposed within the application that there would be 30 full-time jobs created through the development and 40 part-time jobs. So there is a, a real economic benefit through through the development of this site and the creation of this, this uh, um, restaurant unit. So in terms of the actual elevations, you can see here is a typical commercial um, unit that's typical of the, of the design of units we see up at Westwood, so it's quite modern. Um, the materials being used are black, brown and, and cream metal cladding with black and red aluminium framed windows and doors. So while single storey, it's quite a, a, a tall unit. Um, you can see this, this elevation is fronting onto um, Margate Road um, and onto the, the drive through link. So you can see there's um, large elements of glazing within this, this elevation. And then this is the um, elevation facing towards the footpath and the car park area. Um, again, large elements of glazing within it with um, a potential uh, future signage uh, within this space above. And then this would look towards the internal roundabout, so towards the access into the site. And then this is the view that looks onto the roundabout onto Margate Road. So this, this um, elevation is, is quite blank. Um, unfortunately, there's always going to be one elevation that doesn't have um, fenestration within it because this area is the storage yard area and it uh, contains the mechanical um, equipment needed for the unit. So um, as you'll see later in the landscaping plan, the 
landscape, landscape plan does show that there would be planting in front of this to try and soften this elevation. So this is the uh, floor plan for the unit, so just a, a large unit. And again, this is the area here that has um, the cold room and the external yard area. So this, this has more of the blank frontage on this side, but all other three elevations have large areas of glazing, so very active frontages um, on all three, three elevations. And then, um, so this is just, again, just showing, showing the layout just before I go on to um, the landscaping plans. So this is a hard landscaping plan. So this is showing that the um, parking area would be tarmac, but the area, the drive-through road that runs around along with the areas for the external seating area would be paved. So there would be a, um, some variation in the hard surfacing material. So the fact that we have achieved um, permeable paving running around the site here that's um, beneficial compared to the the tarmac and then this is the soft landscaping plan so this was amended during the course of the application following concerns raised with the loss of the trees so this plan is showing the retention of of um, these two trees along the front of the site that I showed you in the photos earlier so these are two cherry trees that are being retained um, an oak tree has been retained in this location here and this is a lime tree that's being retained in this corner here so those four trees being retained and the amended landscaping plan is now showing additional tree planting to compensate the loss of the um, other trees that were having to be removed in order to um, get the, the dry through road running around the site because they were um, too close to the development so 10 trees are now proposed within the development in addition to that there's the hedge planting in this location here running around the refuge stores hedge planting along the sides of the um, existing footpath the benches are shown in this location here so you have three benches running along the footpath and you can see the wildflower meadow area and then along this area here this is where there was quite a blank frontage to that elevation so there's now going to be planting in this area here to soften it and again there's planting close to the um, existing brick wall so whilst the area is soft landscape at the moment and there will be um, a loss of that there will be enhancements as well to biodiversity um, through the planting of, of native native species around the site um, and also the better use of, of this land as, a, as external amenity land with the wildflower meadow and then also the just the general use of the land through having the the benches um, because there's there's limited space for this within within Westwood town center so it's, it's useful to have these sorts of spaces so um, one of the considerations was to do with um, air quality. So in terms of electric vehicle charging, they have proposed to provide the electric vehicle charging off-site. So this would be um, outside the site within the existing Tesco car park or Broadstairs Retail Park car park. So a legal agreement has been submitted, a signed legal agreement with the development, with the application, sorry, that includes um, the provision of uh, three electric vehicle charging spaces, either within this car park area here or within this car park area here, and that's to be provided within 12 months of the unit coming into use. Um, in terms of the impact on neighbouring properties, I'll just go back to, actually, I might go back, sorry, to the first plan. So here you can see the distance to the nearest neighbouring property. So th this is the nearest neighbouring property to the site here. It's 88 metres from the development um, so in terms of the impact, the impacts considered were the impact on, from noise and disturbance of the development and from light pollution. So in terms of noise and disturbance, it's proposed that the unit would be open from 6 in the morning till 11 at night, um, seven days a week, with deliveries taking place between 6 in the morning and, and 5 o'clock at night, and, and these um, hours are, are restricted through condition. Um, the customer order point is 65 metres from the nearest dwelling, and the parking area is, is at least 35 metres away. So um, it was environmental health were consulted, and they advised that no noise assessment was necessary, given the fact that the site is located within an existing commercial area, and there's the McDonald's unit, um, which is opposite the site here, um, which is a 24-hour um, unit, and obviously the petrol station, which is open. So there's other commercial units and Tesco's as well, which are 24-hour units and all already creating noise. So it's not considered that this unit, given the restricted hours of use, would result in um, significant harm from noise and disturbance to the nearest neighbouring property. Um, in terms of lights as well, lights are proposed within the car park area. So I'll just go back to the floor plan. 
So there's some new lights um, lamp posts that are proposed within the, the, the sites along the, the boundaries, but these would all be downward facing lights, so there's, there'd just be no light pollution um, impact on neighbours. And obviously, given the distance, there's no impact in terms of light outlook or any of those um, issues that we would normally consider when, when looking at living conditions. In terms of the impact on highways, highways have raised no concerns with the provision of the 22 parking spaces. Um, they, they consider that they, there are likely to be linked trips with, with people coming out to Westwood Cross anyway that would be shopping and then potentially would you be using this unit. So the actual provision of the unit is unlikely to result in um, a significant increase in vehicle movements um, in, in the town centre. Um, and they have pro pro um, recommended that the pedestrian links be provided. So this this was an, uh, an amendment to the scheme that allows for a pedestrian link across the drive through. Um, and obviously there's a link that comes from the site onto the existing footpath. So these were recommended by highways through the application. Um, and as mentioned, there's the cycle parking and the electric vehicle charging. So um, highways have no concerns with the impact on, on highway safety. And in terms of drainage, um, you, you heard earlier that Southern Water have now raised no objections. So a drainage strategy was submitted with the application. So this is the drainage strategy, which was just showing that the development would connect onto the existing foul sewer that runs along Margate Road and that the area here, which is the, um, the soakaway area, that all surface water drainage would just soak away, soak into that area. So um, Southern Water have removed the need for a, a, a drainage um, plan to be submitted as a pre-commencement condition and are just happy with this drainage strategy. So that has now been amended. So um, so overall, the, the site is in principle acceptable given the fact it's located within the, the town centre and is a commercial unit in, in accordance with the policy. In terms of the appearance of the building, it's a, a typical um, commercial um, design that's in keeping with the, the character of the area, which is of modern commercial developments. There's um, going to be limited impact on neighbouring amenity and highways have raised no concerns. And, and there is a legal agreement that secures the electric vehicle charging spaces off site. So it's recommended for approval on the basis that um, this will result in economic benefits for the area and these will outweigh the limited um, environmental harm, especially given the provision of the amended landscaping plan, which um, achieves some enhancements to biodiversity and new tree planting. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Emma. I move uh, the officer's recommendation, which you've heard is for approval, be adopted. Uh, can I have a second, please? I'll second that, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Comercook. Councillor Garner. Thank you, yeah. Um, thank you, Emma, for the, that presentation. Um, yeah, as was mentioned, I've got a few things, a few concerns I just wanted to uh, bring to the planning committee on this application. Um, as Ian mentioned earlier, this is incorrectly marked as being in Sir Moses Montefiore ward. So I or any of the other town councillors in Broadstairs, on, on which this is on the on the border, hadn't brought it to the attention of the town council. So the town council hadn't had a chance to comment on it, which I'm sure they they would have. But putting that aside, one my my concerns were around uh, the impact on the biodiversity and the loss of trees, but also the increase in the traffic and the impact on the air quality. Um, where most of the presentation was talking about this in isolation, this new drive-through restaurant takeaway in isolation, but. On within 100 metres of that site, there's the already existing McDonald's, which has just had a application approved to increase to three lanes of traffic um, to to enter the drive-through, which is going to increase the traffic there. And some of us will probably be aware that on the other side of the McDonald's, there's a new Starbucks drive-through Starbucks stroke restaurant being built, which of course is also going to um, increase the traffic and have an adverse effect on the air quality. Um, so while I did note in the report that um, air quality assessment and emissions mitigation assessment was not required because of the size of the development, when you add all of these new, the, the existing McDonald's and these 
new drive throughs there is going to be a quite serious adverse impact on the air quality and emissions for the area this is i mean i'm i'm sure most of us are very familiar with this area it is very busy um because you know it's accessing to westward cross to the tesco's to sainsbury's tesco's um garage it is very busy and i and i think it is going to become a lot busier and one thing that i've noticed certainly with the other mcdonald's which is recently opened down the road um from here is the the increase in home delivery um drivers who don't seem to be allowed to go in they have to park outside to then walk in to collect and i think this needs also to be taken into consideration because there there will be an increase in traffic and and um, emissions there. Um, now, you, as far as the Westwood Town Centre, this being in Westwood Town Centre and a strategy associated with it, um, I know that we're looking as part of the local plan review to um, increase or to try and encourage people certainly to use their bikes and to walk in between the sites at Westwood. Um, I don't think this proliferation, this this application adding to the others is going to either help that or make it any more pleasant to encourage people to want to walk from Tesco's to Westwood Cross or, or Sainsbury's or any other of the supermarkets that are available to walk across. So I have a concern about this becoming un, unsafe health-wise. Um, for walkers and cyclists. Um, one thing that also isn't noted in the report, and I haven't seen a comment from Kent Police, because uh, often we get a report on antisocial behaviour. And again, I guess with one with these individual sites taken in isolation, there they might not be considered a problem. But with soon to be possibly three of these there must be an in increasing concern about antisocial behaviour. Um, you, meant, we meant, you mentioned the, the houses that are quite close, close by. Um, I think, I guess this is just another layer of, of um, trouble and bother for them in terms of the traffic and air pollution I've, I've talked about, but the light pollution and, and everything else that is going to worry them. Um, it's, it's unfortunate for them, I guess, that they've, they've chosen to live near a, near a shopping centre, but it's just another level of, of, of impact on, of, on those. Um, the, the biodiversity aspect, I mean, I am, I'm, on the plus side, I'm pleased that they have been persuaded to plant a few more uh, trees around the site, but this is the last sort of on that Tesco's spaced area, this is the last bit of green that, that exists up there. Mm -hmm. And while the trees were mentioned, there is quite a large, um, a large hedge that was sort of overlooked a little bit, that is just as important, certainly to the, the birds who are, who, when they are flying around, they're looking for somewhere to land. There's not that many hedges left for them to land mm -hmm. in. So, I'm sure that will be ought to be ought to be considered. Um, I think I believe this plot of land they had before this application went in, been considering you know enhancing it by biodiversity wise, by biodiversity wise to form part of the wildlife life corridor that's trying to be created um, in patches across there, and I just think. I mean, it's unfortunate for these applicants, but it's, in summary, I think it's the final straw on that patch that's broken the, um, broken the back of allowing any more of these type of developments anymore. So, you know, I've, I've got, I'll be interested to hear what others have got to say about it, but I do believe this, this, this is a step too far for, for that area as far as 
drive throughs air quality and everything else is considered thank you uh, thank you councillor garner i will just touch what you mentioned about the st moses montefiore ward was uh, i spotted that um, and i am aware it was an error which can can happen and i think uh, totally understand what you're saying but i think if members do look at their lists you, you know where you live um and that's not being rude to you if you don't mind me saying that no thank you right a few hands up um i think councillor councillor hart i'll go for councillor hart thank you chair um i do agree um with my colleague there but i i, I do have a couple of concerns um firstly if water runs off that site and goes into the drainage system there does that have an oil trap in it and a fuel trap to take away those before they go into the ground water secondly if you're going to put paving in or paviers around the edge that then becomes an area where oils and petrols can leak into the soil if you have a hard surface like um, tarmac it can then go into that overflow system and that's not a problem but if that should I, I believe have an oil trap in it because if you had something which was uh, I don't know a major site where you had a transfer station you have to have separate things to take out separate waste and oils and spillages well that's the same sort of design really that you could actually put into these and remove those before they go into the ground ground totally does that have it will it have it and what about the the pavers where it's just going to go straight into the ground thank you i i don't know the answer i'm afraid i don't know the answer as to whether there's a oil trap in it i mean it's a it's an area of hard of, of soft landscapes area at the moment that there's no concerns have been raised from some water like i say the drainage pan before you is just showing that the water would drain from the hard surface area into that space which is quite a substantial area but yeah i don't know sorry sorry chip but maybe that should be included into that sort of plan if they're going to have these areas where it's going to run into quite considerable water into an area they should have an oil trap or a fuel trap just to stop it going into the main ground because all you're doing is just contaminating the ground further and further and that's what we're trying to avoid really uh, thank you councillor hart councillor paul moore yes thank you chair i think councillor garner and councillor hart have covered all the salient points that i was going to raise i do have concerns with this uh, development i think it's the thin of the wedge of losing a green a greenwoods area um, it was planned previously to be part of the biodiversity so that we could have an area where birds and insects migrating could hop leap and jump to different areas and there are other commercial units there which they could heavily invest in and use those though some of them are shut now that they could be used i think this is just um a, a money spin for someone and i'm not happy with it at all thank you chair uh, thank you council well, yes uh, uh, mr limerson come back hi i just want to come back on the drainage points that have been raised so the drainage plan that you can see in front of you um you'll be able to see the um annotation um which uh, is is in the middle of the the surface area where it's in, indicating a uh, an interceptor with regards to the drainage that's occurring on the site from the hard surfacing so it's <clears throat> how can i put it the um to the south of um actually if i so where the mouse is um now it's it's got the indication of uh, of what's occurring there you can also see the the red showing the points um uh, which is then goes into the existing uh drainage network so you can see there's the the manholes and then the main drain which runs along the road so in terms of where things are draining to on that hard surface it's not being put to infiltrate the ground and i think that's obviously one of the key points in terms of the issue with regards to where it is in terms of groundwater what i will do is uh, in between other questions i'll just check where this site is in relation to the groundwater source protection zone but with regards to surface water drainage specifically that's going off that uh, hard surface it's not being infiltrated into ground and there is an interceptor in place and that's the drainage strategy that has been added in for the the confirmation that it's got to be built in accordance with thank you chair uh thank you and councillor Crinton. thank you 
picking up on uh, quite a few of the things that have already been said, um, I, I do feel that there isn't already um, a fair amount of this kind of uh, business in that area. Um, including not only McDonald's uh, down the road, but you've got the Canterbury Bell, the Hood and Horse, um, and Tesco's and numerous others. I think this is an extra one that do we need. Um, but also my other main concern is that this is a loss of one what's left of a little bit of green space in what I still think of as an out-of-town shopping centre. Um, I can't call it a town centre, I'm sorry. Um, and it's environmental poverty to lose that visual bit of green. Um, and I, I would hate to see this developed, even though we've got a few bushes and some wildflowers, it's not going to make up for the fact that you've got this chunk of a, of a development um, that is now going to be added into what is already um, a very, very built up area and the loss of just that, that environmental poverty issue the loss of the green space so those, those are my thoughts on it thank you uh thank you uh, councillor everett thank you chair yeah i mean I, I share the concern that this is an undesirable development but i'm not really hearing anything which amounts to, to grounds for refusing permission personally i mean we have to consider this application on its own merits and we have to look at its incremental impact um, on the overall situation not consider what how many coffee shops there are um, or how many uh, vehicles might be going to other things in the immediate area. Um, so I, I would be concerned if this committee rejected this application because I, I think we would struggle to justify um, that, that refusal. I mean, what does concern me a, a bit is that clearly at some point um, the overall scheme or, or that particular part of Westwood has come before um, the, the council for consideration and no doubt that green finger has been identified as a positive benefit of the previous proposal. And now, of course, someone else comes along and says, oh, what a good idea, we can develop that piece of land. <laughs> Um, which does make a bit of a nonsense out of the whole thing. But I, I think personally we would struggle to reject it. And whilst I don't welcome it, um, I don't think that would be a sensible thing for the committee to do. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Councillor Avery. If I may, I know I don't normally comment because it's yourselves, but this piece of land, um, which I'm aware of, uh, as we all are, has over the years been a massive problem with litter, uh, the pathway that goes, as it's been mentioned, from uh, the Margate Road onto the Tesco site. Um, and there has been massive issues over that. Some members here might recall that. Um, and I'm not, I'm not influenced in any way. I do understand what Councillor Everett is saying here. There's somebody coming along with another unit, um, first in Kent. So I'm you know, reading the documents and so on. Um, but obviously, it's up yourselves. Uh, it's only out of interest what I've said there. Uh, Councillor Bayford. Thank you, Chair. Um, I agree with a lot of things that Councillor Everett said. Uh, I think we should be looking at this application in its own right regarding things like air quality. It's a relatively small development. Um, and I think it's very, very important that there would be op job opportunities offered. I think they've got to come from somewhere. Um, I think that, yes, we've lost a green space, but it's been replaced with a wild flower garden, um, soft landscaping. There's great consideration for biodiversity. So I feel it's a change rather than a loss. Um, and as I say, I, for the economic development concerned, I, I, f I feel we should support this application. Thank you. Councillor Alban. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, question first. Can you advise why it's going to take a year for the electric vehicle points to be put in? Uh, yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, so what I've been advised is, um, obviously you're probably aware that a few of these units within um, Borsos Retail Park are, are vacant. Um, so the um, 
the, the owners of, of the site are basically looking at what they're going to do with this site into the future. So it, it may be that there's some refiguration taking place of those units and it may also look at the refiguration of the car parking area. So what they're concerned about is putting any parking uh, electric vehicle charging points in and then that having to be aborted because they're having to change, reach, uh, change the um, layout. So that's why they're looking at um, this this year from the opening of the unit before those were put in so they can have time to look at how that site's going to be used and how they're going to fill those units. Uh, so is the reason why they're not within the development site because there's not enough parking spaces in that site? Would that be the... Uh, no, sorry. They're, so they're not within the site itself because, um, I mean, the, we did initially ask for them to be within the actual site itself, and that's normally what we would go for. Um, but the advocate or the agent has advised or suggested that because the um, vehicles used in the site are going to be quite short stay vehicles, it's unlikely to be as beneficial as if they were to be placed in the large car park. Because obviously, there's no electric vehicle charging anywhere in that I'm aware of in the Tesco car park or the Bourses retail park car park. And as you can see, the size of those is, is massive. So it's actually more beneficial to actually have the spaces for electric vehicle charging in those car parks. And therefore, we can again, it's t in terms of shared links, people would park there, be able to go to the retail units, go to that. Um, that, that cafe unit, whereas with only the 22 spaces in there, they're going to be more linked to just people using that, that unit rather than a, sort of a larger area. So that was that's the reason behind it. Thank you, Chair. Can I just finish a couple of points, if I may? Um, so I, I'm mindful of what Councillor Garner started off when, when, with his uh, comments. Um, and my concern was in relation to the loss of that, of, of the trees, etc. But having read the, the, uh, the TDC tree officer's comments, that he's very happy with the amendments made. And please thank them for taking on board my recommendations for plants. These will help improve the aesthetics and biodiversity. I'm happy with the additional trees to help mitigate some of the tree loss. So I, I think for that particular issue, that, that overcomes that. And the trees that will be going back in will help migrating birds, uh, just the same as the current ones are. I know they've got to grow, et cetera, but they will do that. Um, and also the, 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 wild fly, the, wild flyer, the wild flower uh, areas are, uh, again, in my view, um, to the green area, which uh, which is which as the chair had said, you know, I know, you know, it is full of strewn rubbish, and it's never cleared, um, except the, your volunteer will come down and do it. I know we've, I, I know the council before and as asked Tesco's to come and do it. Um, so I'm I'm reasonable. I'm reasonably happy about that. My my real concern was the. the the impacts of this de development on the adjacent <coughs> house, the, the nearest house, but you said it's 88 metres away. Is that from the building? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> thank you for that, Councillor Alban. Councillor Wing. Thank, thank you, Chair. I mean, I'd like to support uh, a lot of what Mike said, actually. I don't think we, and there's no offence meant to anybody, but I think we've all got to change out the way we think. We cannot say it's just grass, because grass is an important uh, early uh, <coughs> level of biodiversity. It contains all sorts of bugs and worms that, that, that other, uh, other animals further up the food chain require. So although I, I am concerned about the loss of trees, and it's good to see that the trees, that there's a greater number of trees going to be put in than lost, I have real concerns about, about the loss of grassland, particularly in an area where there is hardly any grassland there, uh, which is, is sad. Uh, so uh, we need to we need to start thinking about biodiversity as not just being the trees. I'd also a lot of the trees that have been planted around there. I, I don't think there's any guarantee that, that any business is going to look after their trees once they've been planted because they tend to plant the cheapest saplings and then they don't look after them. And, and there's lots of examples on that site where trees haven't been looked after and, and have died. 
Going back to the grass, I mean, the whole most of the area, I mean, I would say about 99% of that area it, it, that was grass is now going to be covered over with either building or tarmac. Um, is the tarmac porous or are we just creating a, a, a more of a flooding issue? And there are a number of flooding issues on that site in heavy rains, one outside Marks and Spencers, for example. Uh, so is the, is the tarmac porous? Will, the, will, the, will, the, will it drain through? I don't know. Uh, the pollution, we move, Westwood Cross is moving from a place where you go and shop and go home to a, pla a more of a leisure area where, where, where people tend to sit down and eat. So although we don't have to be concerned with houses that are that are further away, maybe we do have to be concerned with the fact that we're now encouraging people to sit in an area where there is a constant flow of vehicles in and out to buy things. Uh, and also the charging points. We've got a situation with uh, the new Audi on Boundary Road. Those charging points should have been in before the shop was opened, and they're not. And some eagle-eyed locals have, uh, have made that complaint, and I know planning are gratefully dealing with that. I, I, I don't get a year for charging points. If you go into parts of London, there's charging points out of lamp posts there's there's lamp there's there's ones that are on posts i think that's just a, a delaying tactic by the business i i don't think it's particularly a massive cost considering that build so i think we definitely i won't be supporting the project but if we do we definitely should be insisting on the charging points being in at the same time as the development uh, thank you for that councillor keen uh, how's the common cook thank you chair <clears throat> Um, can I just ask, has there been any objections from those neighbours? Well, I don't... Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I was, it's watching Councillor Alban turn his off. Um, the, the, I do understand what people are saying about grass areas, but I think we've got to take into consideration it was a huge grass area before it became Westwood Cross. And when we talk about people coming up there to do shopping, there are, I'm not sure it's going to increase traffic because people will choose then whether they go to McDonald's or Starbucks or Hortons. That will be people's choice. And personally, I think that 70 jobs is a lot of local jobs. So I will be supporting it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Coleman Cook. Okay, members, I can't see any other hands raised, so I'm going to put this to yourselves. Um, the officer's recommendation, as you've heard, is for approval. Those in favour, could they please show? Those against? That is carried. Thank you, members. No, those, no abstentions, I don't think. Oh, but beg your pardon, Heather, sorry. That was carried. Thank you, members. That concludes the meeting for tonight. Um, thank you for your time, as always, officers. Thank you.